private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned... Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments, or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter. The dead body of Zachary Carlyle, Alexa's little brother. I wonder what happened to him, 47. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. 
Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. Please stay back. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Okay. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come this is very useful information, 47. See me when you do. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? So upset. But she's never seen a dead body before. Life can be tough sometimes. And that detective asked to come here. Madame Carlyle must believe Zachary was murdered. Why else ask him to snoop around? I feel weak in my knees from all this tension here. You will all need a vacation when this is over. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. Rosie... You need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Hello there. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner, and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now, he just ignores her. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa... ...the murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. Painkiller. And 47, the handwriting letter. doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence right, to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. A 
keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. That is the door to Rebecca's room. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Well, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Emmer Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. 
She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask? Solicitor upstairs. Why do you think he's here? I think solicitor. That music oh, makes my heart sore. Quite the poet. But you're right. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He would never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the Stag's Head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? This is a table. Showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go to... Tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. Down, and you know I'm good for it. I'm a Carlisle, I'm made of money. 
An old letter, 47. Never opened. Must have slid under the secret door nearly 46 years ago. It states that Alexa Carlyle's older brother, Montgomery, wanted Alexa to become the heir to the Carlyle Empire instead of himself. Hmm. Interesting. You're an excellent detective, 47. Uncovering truths half a century old. If you frame it correctly, I believe you could use the information to convince Madame Carlyle that Zachary Carlyle. committed suicide. If you'll follow me, sir. Maybe you should ask Mr. Fernsby to see her. Good, looking good. You know of any news that I was starting in the last week? Not that this I is Madame Carlyle's office. Keep an eye Please out. step inside. Stay on top of things like that. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. The butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. Hmm. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlyle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The constant? That must mean you're... Oh. <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, 
I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. you want is in the safe. Good hunting. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. How you been? Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to imply that you're not fine. You're Oh, God. I have to finish that eulogy. Who would have thought? You fucked up, didn't you? Staging your own death? A major, grandiose cock-up, I'd say. Be quiet, Gregory. It shows you're only human, after all. I never would have guessed. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, this one looks like... Mission a complete. Well done, 47. <laughs> Your niece, Emmer Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emmer is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. 
Emmer is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out at takeover from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gallery to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way, then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get Edwards and make him hurt. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. <gasps> Mission complete. Well done, 47. Your brother committed suicide. I need to see some evidence to believe that, Mr. Whitmer. Zachary was found dead in a room locked from the inside. He died from a rare poisonous plant he cultivated himself. He believed you were dead, and a suicide note explained that he did not have the courage to go on without you. That's what I don't buy. I cared for him deeply, but the truth is he hated my guts. My death would not make him commit suicide, I can promise you that. Perhaps the death of your older brother, Montgomery, then. I have found evidence showing that you and Zachary killed him nearly 50 years ago. I believe that was when Zachary turned recluse. Your brother recently uncovered proof that your past deeds were for nothing. A letter from Montgomery stating that he wanted you, Madame Carlyle, to take over from your father instead of himself, as you were better suited to the job. Everything would have turned out the way you wanted, without anyone dying. What broke Zachary once, now destroyed him. And you saw this letter? I did. Oh, 
Zachary. How royally I fucked up. Mr. Whitmer, I'm sorry, I, I, I... I just need to gather my thoughts. Right. The payment for your services, have you decided on an amount? Arthur Edwards. You have a file on him. Arthur Edwards? How do you... I see. Well played. For many, many years I feared what I'd see when I finally met death. And now you sit before me, and I feel only peace. You see, I believe life is a fair fight, and I lost spectacularly in every way imaginable. It is time for me to leave the pit. Oh, before I get to that, your reward, the file you want is in the safe. A last wish from a dying woman. Get Edwards and make him suffer. So long. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Mission complete. Well done.